Hello YouTube! Today we're talking about restoration magic, specifically healing magic and how it might work. The idea for this video came after my friend Rockster from Discord presented me with his theory on how restoration might work, which really intrigued me and on which I built. So I was looking forward to seeing what I could find on the subject. Now without much further ado, let's kick right into this video. Before we begin, I need to warn you that discretion is kind of advised while watching this video. We will be talking about how wounds can be healed in universe for example. I will not show anything graphic, but I will indulge in some more or less graphic descriptions of the process. So if you really don't want to listen to that kind of thing, I warned you. Now first of all, when I said restoration magic in the title of this video, I literally mean the magic that helps restore yourself, so healing magic. Let's be clear here, the school of restoration is just a construct. Under the school of restoration we also count protective wards, necromancy and some other spells, but that's just a category used by the different magical institutions, just like destruction for example. These are simply categories in which the different institutions place spells to be able to qualify expertise and to give coherent tutoring in a certain class of spell. A good example is the school of mysticism which existed in the third era but apparently ceased to exist in the fourth era as we don't see it in Skyrim. But except that's not what happened, it did not cease to exist. Rather the spells of mysticism, or at least the ones that made it to the new games, were categorized under different schools, highlighting the fact that the categories are just that, categories, and do not per se something say about the spells within, other than that some people deem them to be together for convenience. Now, today we will specifically talk about healing spells, and also to an extent about healing potions and other med medicinal substances in the Elder Scrolls universe. But first, let's talk about the very basics of the healing process. In our own universe, and presumably also in the in-lore perception of the Elder Scrolls universe, when we have an injury, like for example a cut, that slowly heals. Our bodies have to evolve in such a way that by creating new cells and utilizing the properties of blood, our cut will, in time, be healed by itself. Now, of course, in our own universe that cut can be too severe, because if it's too severe you will be dead due to blood loss before the cut will be healed out of itself. Now, what if you, for example, have a disease, for example a cold? Well, then the body will usually fight it off by itself. I will not go too much into the biology of things, but our body has a whole array of different types of cells that can help us fight diseases. And slowly but steadily, the body usually fights off the diseases by itself. And we have medicines that can help cells speed up the process a little bit, or provide them with the right weapons, so to speak, to fight off the disease. Now, behind the basis of this theory about the healing magic, lies the assumption that these processes work largely in the same way in the Elder Scrolls universe. So wounds can heal by itself, the body fights off diseases by itself, and we can use medicine to help the body along in both processes. Now the theory that Mr. Rockstar presented to me is that rather than causing the healing, the restoration magic rather speeds up the natural process of healing. So under this theory it would mean that the caster converts its own magical energy, for example magica, they convert that into energy, which is transferred into the cells or other processes that cause for natural healing, speeding up the healing process by using that energy. So let's for example take a cut. If you have a cut for example on your leg and it's not too big, you could use that energy that radiates from your healing spell, you could radiate it into the wound. And with that energy you empower your natural healing system to then more quickly heal the wound. Now if we take this little line of thinking a little bit further to let's say a really deep cut or a really broad wound, just pouring energy into the existing process would not be enough because you would bleed to death. So for this, in our own universe, we use stitches to bring the two edges of a wound together to make sure that the natural process of healing can properly start. The same thing would go up for the magical healing. For it to work, you would have to bring the edges together so the natural process of healing could start. So and then you can accelerate it using magic. If there's no process to begin with, there's nothing to speed up. So make sure that the process is at least starting to be able to accelerate it using magic. This makes a lot of sense, since the in-game descriptions of healing magic sometimes literally state that it restores wholeness by re-knitting the damaged material. 
meaning that at least on a basic level all our theory could make sense with the established lore. Now if we continue this little line of thought then restoration magic in our interpretation could in lore have severe drawbacks too if it's used by inexperienced healers. Think for example about a broken bone. If you have a broken bone that has one end displaced, in our own universe you would for perform surgery first to then place the bone back in the right place. And then use a splint to keep the bone in place so that the natural healing process can eventually heal your broken bones in a natural way. Now in the Elder Scrolls universe under our theory of magic you would need to make sure that the bones have been placed in the right spot as well. For example if an in inexperienced healer would just start healing a place with a broken bone without first placing the bone in the right location the tissue around the bone would start to heal and maybe even the bone itself would start to heal. However if the bone is not in the right place during this process the patient could end up with a permanently displaced bone which would be a worse situation than the one you started in. Now, this would give some merit to the idea that to be a good healer you would also need to know a bit of human anatomy. Because you can't just heal bones without placing it in the right place and you need to know what you're doing. Now this all seems pretty logical to me, even if it's just a theory, this would in concept explain how the system with healing magic could work. Now what's an interesting thing of course is that in lore it's probably way more complicated than it's explained in the games. I mean, that's what all this video is about. In the games we just have a health bar, which represents the overall physical well-being of a character. But behind that health bar, things are presumably way more complicated. And I think our theory does a good job at explaining that in a realistic way, in how this magical healing system would work. Now something that comes to mind immediately, at least to me, when talking about healing magic and wounds, or at least to us, is the face sculptor in Riften, who for a modest price is willing to completely remodel your face. Now under our system, how would you go about that? In our dialogue she mentions using knives and having studied surgery in crowd rest. So my best guess would be that to remodel your face, for example make it thinner, she will cut out tissue in your face and then use healing magic to seamlessly connect the edges of the cuts that she makes. Or for example if you want a longer chin, <laughs> She could cut in your skin and then take a sample of human tissue and then add it to the face and then use healing magic to make it heal seamlessly into the existing skin. Same would go for other procedures and if for example you would want something fundamental change like your eye or skin color, they might use some form of alteration magic. Now under our theoretical system this would all work pretty well, but what about healing potions? Where do they fit into this story? Well, I think that using and making healing potions is a bit more complicated than it's presented into the game, like everything, basically. I personally suspect that healing potions would work rather differently from how they are presented in the game. In the game we have healing potions that differ from just healing a couple of HP to fully healing your HP bar. This is most likely just a gameplay element and I suspect that all potions in games are different from one another. In sense, they might differ in strength ingredients, effectiveness and quality, and maybe on other fronts. I personally suspect that the very basic use of healing potions would not be to drink it, but rather pour it on a wound. If we for example take our big leg cut we mentioned before, you would have to drip or maybe spray a bit of the potion into the wound, then hold the edges together, and then the substance in the potion would speed up the natural healing process. The type of potion would matter, so if it's really cheaply made or if it's really well made, would then determine the speed and effectiveness of the healing of the wound. For example, a really cheap potion would only speed up the healing process a little bit or would just really weakly stimulate the natural healing process, while a really good quality potion would help along healing the wound much quicker, like a healing spell. Now as I said before, the quality of the healing potion would matter and so would the ingredients. Perhaps certain ingredients would help different parts of the body heal better, we don't really know about that since everything is very generalized in our current alchemy system. Now I do think that regeneration potions for example you need to drink. I think these potions if they exist at all in lore and aren't just a gameplay element would have the effect of slowly healing your body from within just like that I think that fortify healing potions or fortify HP potions you would also need to drink as it probably does something along the lines of strengthening your cell bonds or in any way increase the whole body's ability to hold itself together for some reason. I don't really think there's a way to properly explain force by healing potions, but then again they might just be a gameplay element. Cure disease potions on the other hand would be pretty easily explained, 
It's probably some substance that increases the body's natural defense system or strengthens the body's natural defense system. Probably there are just different types of potions for different types of diseases, but they made it simple in the games and just went with a standard cure disease potion. For example, we have at least five ingredients in Skyrim alone that have the property to cure, cure diseases. With these you can make a lot of different combinations and I would guess that in lore every combination or at least some different combinations can result in a cure for different diseases. And that is a very basic overview of our theory on how magic works and how medicine works in the Elder Scrolls universe. Thanks again to Mr. Rockstar for suggesting the topic and helping me along with the theory. It really helped. And with that said, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe for more Elder Scrolls lore content. Uh, yeah, if you want personal contact with me, my Discord and Instagram are always in the description. Also in the description is my Patreon if you want to support me in a more personal way. There you get your name at the end of every video and some minor bonuses and you get to be at the live lore lecture thingies. And yeah, I think I will see you all in the next video. And with that, I say bye bye.